Hello, my home lab enthusiasts. Uh, we're going to talk about cooling, about cooling your home lab, and some ideas and things to think about. So we're going to start with this very complex picture. Uh, so you have this computer, and it's in a room, and it's plugged into the wall, and we're going to say this computer is drawing 500 watts of power. And so that 500 watts of power that it's drawing from the wall is almost entirely going to heat that's going to be going into the room. The only thing that wouldn't be going into the room directly as heat would be maybe some electromagnetic radiation that doesn't get stuck in the room, but that's a real small amount. So in general, you should treat the computers as if they're big heaters because that's what they are. So you have this computer sitting in a room and it's generating 500 watts of heat. So, you know, what's going to happen in the room? Well, the temperature in the room will start to rise and it'll keep rising until it reaches a point where the energy that's leaving the room is the same as the energy that you're putting into the room. So once we get to where we have 500 watts leaving the room, then the, whatever that temperature is is what it's going to stabilize at. And the whole point of this exercise for a home lab is we want this to be some reasonable number like maybe 75 degrees Fahrenheit. So the question is, well, what can we do to figure out how to keep this room cool with our really cool home lab computers making lots of heat? Uh, so we'll start with that, you know, if you're in a room, you know, the room itself can uh, get rid of some heat via convection through the walls. So if the room gets warmer, it may heat up the walls and that may heat up other parts of your house that are outside of these walls. And so there is a certain amount of energy you could put into the room that would make its way back out through this convection to the rest of the house. Uh, if the room is, has, is an outside wall and the outside air temperature is, let's say, 50 degrees Fahrenheit, then you'll be able to dissipate some heat through your wall to the outside world. Uh, and so it's possible to have a small computer in a room and there's enough convection of energy out of the room to keep the room uh, at a stable temperature. And that depends mostly on how much heat you're putting in and how well insulated the room is. Uh, and maybe also what the outside air temperature or what your house temperature is. Uh, but in general, at a home lab, that's going to be a pretty small home lab that can work in an environment like that. So the next thing to consider is, well, let's consider airflow. And if you have a room that you're using for a home lab, and it's, say, a spare bedroom, and it has in it a air vent where air can be pushed into the room from your HVAC. Uh, even if your HVAC isn't running the air conditioning mode, just your HVAC fan, if it's just running the fan, it's you know pushing air to the rooms and pulling it in from a register somewhere else in the house. Uh, and you know, of course, the air being pushed into the room is going to leave the room through small spaces, cracks in the door, uh, and other ways for the air to get out of the room. And just having the fan running, your, your furnace fan running and pushing air into the room and then out, We'll take some of that heat and spread it out to the rest of your house because of course it's all going to make its way eventually back to the air intake register and so just running having airflow running through the room could allow you to take the heat that's in the room and push it to other parts of your house which in the winter might be great in the summer not so great so just having airflow is a good idea um, i had a server room i think to see two server rooms ago that was a small mechanical room and I put a vent in the door, a pretty big one, and then a fan on the inside that pushed air out into the hallway. And, you know, just that airflow of pushing air out and air coming in was enough for me to run a couple of servers and it not get crazy hot in there. So for a, for a small uh, power draw on a small lab, you might be able to get away with just moving some airflow and getting that air out of the room and into other parts of the house. That'll be less so if it's super hot outside. Um, but a second thing you should consider, uh, you know, the, the airflow is great, but also what about using airflow from outside? So people often call this an economizer where you have some type of fan mechanism that can blow air in from outside. And then you usually have some way for the air to leave either to go back outside or to go maybe somewhere else in your house. And in my home lab here, I have a setup where I have a fan that can bring in outside air and then another fan that can push that air into my, this, this lower garage area. And the idea being that when it's cold out, so if it's 
50 degrees out or even colder. This will bring in the cold air into the server room. That air gets heated up and then it gets pulled out and pushed here into this garage. So I get to use some of the heat I'm generating from the computers uh, to heat my garage. And it, it does work. It's not a huge amount of heat. It depends on how much airflow you get uh, to do it. But it, it can be a way to bring extra energy and to just not throw the energy away. Uh, the big advantage is you're using this outside lower air temperature to keep your room cool. Uh, and so if you're going to build a room, put in a fan and, and a way to bring in outside air and then a way to push that air somewhere else, whether it be into your house or also back outside. Because uh, there's many circumstances, while well, even during the day, maybe it's 90 degrees you know, where you live during the day. But if it's below 75 at night, you could be bringing in outside air to uh, help cool the room. Uh, in my setup, I think I, I have a Raspberry Pi that runs both of these two fans. And it is set right now to run the fans if the outside temperature is 20 degrees less than the current inside air temperature. Uh, I don't think that number is a precise thing. I think probably even at 10 degree difference, it would still be worth the energy needed to bring the air into the room. But if you're going to build something, consider doing uh, an economizer because it's useful in almost all circumstances. Uh, if you're building a slightly bigger home lab, let's say you're talking about not 500 watts, but maybe two kilowatts, maybe up to five kilowatts, something like that. Uh, that's probably going to be insufficient, the, the air coming in from outside. And so then you have to look at the next solution, which is using an air conditioner. And in many cases, a very common thing to use is a mini split. So it mounts on the wall somewhere in there and has a line set that goes to an outside unit. And this mini split can extract heat from in here and push it outside. Uh, and the mini splits themselves are pretty easy to install. They're flexible because the inside unit can mount to a wall and then the outside unit could be even pretty far away depending on uh, of the system, um, but it's a great way to be able to extract heat from the room uh, and push it into the outside air. So these mini splits, uh, they come in different sizes. You, know, you might see a mini split that's 12,000 BTUs, uh, 18,000 and 24,000. These are sort of common size uh, mini splits, but there's, there's a lot of different sizes. There are bigger ones too. Uh, this term, the 18,000 BTUs per hour, uh, it's also something referred to in terms of tons, which is a, kind of an old school AC term. So 12,000 BTUs is one ton. So an 18,000 BTU system would be 1.5 tons. Uh, and this, this 18,000 BTUs, so 12,000 BTUs, so one ton is equal to 3,500 watts. So 1.5 ton would be 50 to 50 watts, I think. That sounds right. Um, so, you know, 1.5 ton, 8,000 BTUs, 5,250 watts of ability to remove heat. But this number is not a precise thing that is absolute. It depends on the difference between the inside and the outside air temperature and the temperature in the coils and the outside air temperature. So it's not a precise thing that's always going to be that amount. Um, it also depends on the humidity because it takes energy to remove the water from air. Like I think it's like 970 BTUs per pound of water to remove it from uh, to remove from air. So if the room is very humid, it'll take a lot of the quite like the BTUs just to remove that humidity without lowering the temperature at all. Um, that's an important one, which we'll come back to later on with economizer. You need to think about. Um, but nonetheless, you know this 18,000 BTU, which is what I have in my mini split. You know you're talking about 5,000 watts, but that's really on the high side. Um, and sure enough, my server room generally runs between 3.5 and 4 kilowatts. Uh, sometimes it'll go as high as 7, but not very often. And I, you know, I've discovered that in this 3 to 4 kilowatt range, you know, this is more than adequate to keep the room at a stable temperature in, in almost all environments. Um, I think if I were running closer to 5 or something above 5, this would become insufficient and the result would be a rise in temperature. So it may be that with this setup and you know, five or five and a half kilowatts of generation, I couldn't maintain 75. I might be able to maintain 85. Um, we'd have to test it and see, but there'll be some point where that's the, the temperature that we can maintain. So if you're gonna size, you wanna size based on how much power you think you're gonna put into the room and have a little bit of margin of error there. I've seen some rooms where people do too many splits and the idea being that 
uh, two smaller mini splits is a little better if one of them fails, you still have some heat extraction, meaning that the room will instantly go to 120 degrees. It'll take it a while and you'll be able to still keep it, uh, there will be some stuff running perhaps. And so if you're gonna do a big room with a lot of power coming into it, you can consider doing uh, two mini splits. Um, and so the mini split is a great way to both remove heat from the room and also control humidity. I did mention the economizer thing. So one thing to consider is that if you bring in outside air and that outside air is cooler, but is much, much more humid. That's a good example. I, I live in, in Portland, Oregon, and uh, oftentimes it's 50 degrees and raining here, often being like half of the year. <laughs> uh, and that's nearly 100% humidity. And so bringing that air in is bringing in quite a bit of humidity, which then the air conditioner has to remove before it can lower the temperature again. Now the trade-off with 50 degree air is still worth it because that is hugely cooler than the room is. And so it's a great way to remove heat. But you know, if it were maybe only five degrees cooler outside, but more humid, you probably wouldn't want to run the economizer because your net gain would be almost negative from having to remove the humidity. So think a little bit about that. You know, I think you want to target, I think my room is maybe 45% humidity all the time, something like that. Uh, it's a little easier to control here. If you live somewhere where it's super humid, that might be um, more work and you might need a bigger air conditioner just for that humidity alone. Um, one thing to consider about this whole scheme of running an air conditioner for your server room is that you're going to run it all the time. So mine, the unit I have in mind has been running for three years continuously with the exception of, I, I think I did two maintenances on it to check things out, make sure it was working okay. Other than that, it runs all the time. It's just chugging away 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Um, and so one is that the mini split's gonna get a lot of uh, a lot of use, a lot of wear and tear, because it's running all the time. But more importantly, is that it's going to be running when it's really cold outside. So it could be, you know, here in the winter, it might get down to 25 degrees Fahrenheit, which I realize isn't that cold. Uh, you know, other places in the US could be, you know, zero degrees or minus 10 degrees. Uh, and you're still running the air conditioner because it's still producing heat. Now, if it's super cold out, you might be bringing in enough economizer air if you have a big enough air intake to not need it. But in most cases, you're going to have the air conditioner running. And the important thing is that not all mini splits can run with the outside air temperature super low. Uh, the one I have in particular uh, can do outside running down to zero degrees Fahrenheit, which I did on purpose. Um, sometimes these are called low ambient uh, mini splits. Um, and they're ones that are designed for this use case. Keep in mind this specification and the low ambient is often targeted more towards using it as a heater. So can it operate to heat the inside at low temperatures, but it also has an effect on its ability to be an air conditioner at low temperatures. There are some mini splits. I, I think some mini splits you might buy one in Florida where the unit is not designed to run below 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And so that might work for you, but it also might not if you need to extract heat from your room when it's really cold out. So play, pay post, close attention to that, um, especially based on what your outside air temperature is and how big your air intake can be and how much air you can put through the room. Um, because you wouldn't want to buy one of these and have it uh, fail when it's really cold out and then have your server room overheat when it's super cold out. That'd be kind of a, kind of a bummer. Um, so something you want to consider when you're putting this together. Um, other than that, I think the, you know, the, the biggest variances with this is you also want to think about the room itself and like how air moves in the room. Uh, if you've ever been to a data center, there are some data centers, this isn't as common now, but there are still some that do it, where you know they have racks of computers and they have the idea of there being a cold aisle and a hot aisle and the servers are all pulling air from the cold side and pushing it to the hot side. And in fact, if you look at uh, enterprise, a lot of enterprise gear, many of them have the capability to switch the direction of the fans for that exact reason. So if you have it mounted on the back of a rack but you want the airflow to go toward the back, you can reverse the fans. Um, so think about the flow in your room. In, in my room, I was able to make it so that the air from the servers pushes towards the back of the room. And that's where the air system that pulls air out. And then the cold air from outside is as far away as I could get it from that location. Uh, that way you have the best chance of the cold air coming in from outside making its way through the equipment and then back out the hot side. The same is true for the mini split. You know, the mini split's gonna have an air intake and then blow the cold air out. And ideally you want it to extract air uh, where it's warm and put cold air in where it gets pulled back in through the computers. 
So think about it when you're laying out the room. Um, there is maybe one other thing I didn't mention, which is that uh, the convection of the room, you know, to the outside world, uh, it can be helped by some things. Like in my case, my server room is underground and it's all concrete actually. You know, and the ground temperature here year round is, you know, something in the 52 to 55 degree Fahrenheit. And so that thermal mass of both the concrete and then the outside ground temperature being uh, low, it, it is a way that you can dissipate heat. And so I certainly dissipate some of the wattage in my room through the fact that the walls are in contact on the outside at a lower temperature. Um, and I'm able to push some heat out that way. Keep in mind that the concrete still, you know, has some insulation to it. So that isn't a perfect transfer. Uh, but it's something to think about that if you're thinking about where to put, it, put your server room, uh, putting it in the basement with good airflow is probably better than putting it in the attic with good airflow. Um, and if you can take advantage of the earth around you to transfer some of that heat, that's always a good thing. Um, and then, of course, also consider maybe a way to take the heat and put it somewhere else in your house. Uh, and there you go. So that's sort of something to think about if you're going to design a server room. That's some ideas about how you can maybe try to get the heat out of the room uh, and somewhere else where you can make good use of it. So that's it. We'll see you all later.